it's times like this that really make me encouraged about the city of St. Louis. When you see this many people come out on an issue like this, it really, really shows that the city of St. Louis, we're really heading in the right direction. So I want to thank you for coming out, for staying involved, letting your voice be heard. Because this is an important thing. How many streets we're going to close, you know, whether they get closed or not, uh, you know, what the traffic, new traffic patterns are going to be. All of those things are going to impact you and your neighbors, right? And Gravoy has really, really taken off in the last few years. We're seeing more businesses open along Gravoy, more people living along Gravoy, so it has become an integral part of the city of St. Louis and of all of our communities. Uh, we ha I have with me tonight all the women green, all the women of the 15th Ward. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Uh, all the woman, Kara Spencer, she's the new all the woman over here at the 20th Ward. Let's give her a round of applause. All the woman, Chrissy and Gracia, that's my all the person over in the 6th Ward. So thank you, thank you. Kenny Ortman, Ortman, Kenny Ortman, he's in the back. Let's give Kenny Ortman a round of applause. We also have me and Jack Coder, the new alderman from the seventh world. Thank you for coming out. We also have with us uh, Modot, Deanna Banker from Modot. Let's, let's give her a round of applause. Thank you for coming out. Uh, and some members of the street department. And the way we're going to run this tonight, first, first I want to bring up a couple of these aldermen who maybe may have just a quick note to say. Then we're going to get into the question and answer session. I was talking to Modot a little bit earlier, and uh, they want to run in a little bit different format uh, than what we're all accustomed to. So, but, we're, but ultimately, what we all need to leave here with tonight, we all need to have some answers to what's happening, right? Give, have an opportunity to have your voices be heard so that all those things can, can come into play when the final plan comes out. Because if you're quiet, the final plan may not be what you want to see. Right? This gives you an opportunity to let your voice be heard. We're going to run this in a really organized fashion. I'm asking everyone, if you have a question or comment, uh, and you come up and state your question or comment, be respectful, even if you're mad, even if you're hot about it. I understand it happens to me every Friday on the Ford Board of Alderman, trust me. right? But just be respectful. and but and try to get your point across, right? Uh, because ultimately what we want to do, we want to capture the data so that we can make sure that whatever plan is implemented ends up being a plan that works for everyone as much as possible, right? So first, let's bring up all the green Just wanted to thank everybody so much for coming out this evening. Um, you know, we knew that we were going to have a pretty good turnout tonight. I wasn't quite sure we were going to have this great of a turnout. Um, you know, here tonight, I'm, I'm really grateful that so many of the other aldermen and women have showed up because um, we really want to hear what your thoughts are tonight. We want to get a little bit more information. I hope you've had an opportunity to look at some of the boards around the room. Um, and really, you know, whether it's coming up and speaking or talking with us afterwards, letting us know what your opinions are, letting us know uh, your feelings on this situation. Obviously, we're elected to represent you, so we need to know what your your concerns are, what your questions are, so that you know as we work with Modot and the Streets Department in the future, we can really make sure that we're making decisions that represent the viewpoints of, of the people that this represent that this affects. So, thank you so much for coming out. All of the sponsors. So I'm the 20th Ward. That for anybody who doesn't know, that's Cherokee Street and South. Um, and I want to echo uh, Megan Green and Lewis Reed's comments. Uh, uh, street closures are important, are very important to all of us. Yeah. And so your input is really vital um, because you know you can look at a street from from the air, or but really being living on them is how we get to know how we use our streets. So uh, whether or not you speak tonight, um, please feel free to reach out to me if you're a constituent or not. Um, and you know we'd love to hear your input verbally, write it, write me an email, or what, however you can get it yeah. through, I would really, really appreciate that. You know, one of the things that all the Spencer said is so key 
A lot of times, just looking at a map and drawing the lines, you really, really, it's, it's really difficult to truly understand how people really, truly use those streets and how it impacts the people that live on those streets. And that's why this is so important tonight to hear from all the women in Grassi. You know, you're good. All the men in Oregon, you're too far away, you're good. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, let's bring up uh, Deanna from Oda. Deanna, can you come up? crowded at one spot are easels showing the different intersections that we have. We have representatives located at each of those easels to help answer your questions and we would be happy to show us where you're at, show us where you're coming from, talk us through what you have and then we'll be able to help you answer any questions you have or comments and then we can take those comments there. You can also go to the MoDOT website and leave a comment there. Um, so I'll go through a couple of things that we've heard over the couple of neighborhood meetings that we've, we've been through. Uh, the big one has been uh, you're gonna create gravel into a race, raceway, speedway. Uh, somebody mentioned tonight, oh, you're gonna race the speed limit up to 55 miles an hour. Um, I love rumors, they're great. Um, none of those are true. So what we're gonna be able to do uh, by adding in the bike lanes throughout from Grand down to 55, we will be able to reduce the footprint. We'll be, able to be making those lanes a little bit skinnier, which makes people automatically drive slower. And then from Jefferson in, we're gonna be taking away a lane that right now we have a six lane section plus parking, and we'll be taking, we'll be taking away a lane uh, making it two lanes in each direction, plus the center turn lane with parking and bike lanes on both sides. So that in itself, taking away the lanes will reduce the amount of traffic speeds that go through that section. Any questions there? Yeah, yeah. we have we have people signed up signed up to speak. I didn't know that. Um, there's there's sign-in sheets. That's what the table was. People were signing in. So and then you also there's also index cards uh, that you can fill out if you don't want to speak tonight. Fill out at least take a moment. Fill out one of those index cards and let us know your opinion. Uh, so we're gonna call the people up in our order. I guess uh, Gary Bollinger. Uh, scheduled to be uh, shut off with a barricade. Uh, fire and emergency medical services, by my estimate, living at that corner, take 15 to 25 runs through Lynch to get to Gravois to service fire and emergency medical situations. Uh, my question to MoDOT is, what, uh, what is your estimate of the increased times for fire and EMS response by cutting off the train traffic? So Modat, um, the question was, uh, have you taken a look at the additional times for uh, fire and EMS transportation? Silence speaks volumes, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. The question, the question.
question was, have you taken a look at the amount of time it will take uh, EMS and fire uh, to respond uh, with the additional street closure? We will have those conversations with uh, Captain Jinkerson. He has uh, just sent over an email yesterday, so we'll take care of that with him. Hold on for a second. No. We're going to try. To, we're going to try to work through this, and we won't ever get through all of the questions and people if we if we have a big uprising in the middle. Um, so, um, uh, Brad, Brad the priest. We'll, we'll, we'll we'll yeah, and Brad. Uh, Paul Jolly, Paul Jolly, come on up. And while Paul is coming up, some of the other ones that are on here is uh, Chris, what is it, and Matt Singer, uh, David, David Lott, and Matt Kastner. If you guys could kind of get ready, that way we can keep it moving. I work across the street here at St. Wenceslaus, and uh, so I'm very close to gravel every day. And my question is, uh, I think there's some plans in for some bike lanes. And I don't know anybody that in their right mind would ride a bike up and down gravel during the day or night. But um, just a comment, and uh, you might want to rethink that one a little bit. Um, that's uh, crossing the street is a challenge sometimes. So uh, just a comment, um, and um, I mean, I, I'm for bikes and that kind of thing, but uh, I don't know that for gravel, it makes a lot of sense to put bikes up and down both sides from Grand all the way down to the highway. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Paul Jolly? Do you want a response? Oh, do you want to respond? I mean, well, I don't want to speak for, uh, Great Rivers Greenway or Trailnet, um, but part of the gateway bike plan that exists in the city of St. Louis actually calls for bike lanes on on uh, Gravway from Jefferson down to 55, and then talking with the aldermen, we're looking at other locations around Gravway up to the county line where we can at least do share the road, if not install bike lanes where we have space. So they are mode of transportation. Um, that we do need to accommodate. We have several bikers in the room and bike, bikers that do use the facilities. Um, and that's, that's been the position of the city and, and of MoDOT. Uh, Chris? Okay, uh, so my name is Chris Nassiger. I, I uh, live in Tower Grove East on the 2900 block of Compton. I've been talking to a lot of my neighbors, and I know a lot of them are very, very upset about the street closures. I think, uh, I think it's safe to say that many people are very upset. I, I know I am. Um, I will get through life with those streets closed if it happens, but I know a lot of people are really concerned about the quality of life uh, on their street if it's blocked off. Um, Gravoy Avenue is Highway 30, but I'd like us to stop thinking about it as a highway and think of it more as a city street. Uh, and in our history, uh, Gravoy was once two lanes wide for about the first 100 years of St. Louis's history. I'm not necessarily saying we should go back to it being uh, 30 feet wide, but uh, I feel like Gravoy should serve the people of St. Louis first and foremost. Thank you. Thank you. David Lott. Hi, my name is David Lott. Uh, I live in Tower Grove East, uh, 3500 block of Magnolia. So um, I experience uh, South Grand on a daily basis and really enjoy what's happened uh, with the new developments on South Grand. Um, first and foremost, the, uh, the street grid is the most permanent and uh, in my opinion, the most sacred element of our city is what differentiates us from the suburbs. If everyone, if we all lived uh, on a cul-de-sac, what's the difference in living in St. Charles or someplace other? So um, I think this is a terrible plan. 
Uh, in my opinion, it seems like MoDOT has brought a saw to turn a screw. And what I mean by that is, it's the wrong tool to serve or to solve the problem that we have here. Um, we have enough roads that uh, separate our neighborhoods. We need more roads that bind our neighborhoods. We have too many roads that are exclusive. We need more roads that are inclusive. Um, all the um, solutions that have been shown on the boards in the back don't really ever address crossing Gravelly, but dealing with all the narrower streets that intersect Gravelly. Um, closing these streets will increase the traffic speeds, uh, it further intimidates pedestrians, and it hampers the real estate development. Uh, we have, if, if you notice, the least desirable lots all along Gravelly, the pie-shaped, flat iron uh, shaped lots, that's where you find all of your car lots. Um, we're gaining more of those. So good luck to MoDOT trying to sell those off, and thank you for giving us more parcels to take care of on the taxpayer's dime. Um, I, I guess that's about it. I, I just think it's terrible in general, and I, uh, I'd like to see more thought put in that is uh, more inclusive to everyone that's involved in the neighborhoods on both sides. Thank you. Hello, my name is uh, Matt Kastner. I uh, live at 26, well, my office is at 2654 Gravoy, uh, and I am sometimes occupied there as a resident as well. Uh, so I'm actually right at the corner of Lynch at the intersection, which I've actually never met Gary, but we're actually like pretty much neighbors, and I never met him before, so. Um, two things, uh, first off, uh, I have a lot of opinions on a lot of the things going on, and I'm sure everybody in this room does. And it is literally impossible that everybody is going to voice their opinion today. And to me, that is the exact epitome of what is wrong with everything that's going on. Everything is happening so fast, and I feel like we're trying to defuse a bomb and trying to figure out, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And the sense of urgency to me, I don't even know what my opinion is on many of these items at this point in time. And frankly, some of my opinions have changed in the last few weeks. And maybe they'll change more. Maybe MoDOT's plan will win me over, and I'll say I'm for it. But it's all happened so fast, and I've been talking to a lot of people in the last few days, and to me, what I've been experiencing and the miscommunication that's been happening and asking people what they think, and they can't even clearly define to me what their opinion is, is again, an example of this is all happening too fast. We need to sit back, figure out, what number one, what are we gonna do with these limited resources that we have, because obviously transportation funding is hard to come by. What is the things that are most important to us as a community? What do we want Gravoy to be? These are conversations we've never had uh, in mass. I mean, there have been little things that come up, but this has just kind of come out of the blue, and it's huge impactful, and it's going to happen really quick. Uh, the second thing, I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, I, though not, yeah, I guess anymore, I was uh, the last uh, president of the Jefferson Gravoy Business Association. Most of you probably don't know what that is because it hasn't existed since 2009, uh, and it is officially, I guess I would say, defunct. Uh, but I wanted to kind of formally put it out there that anybody here that's a business owner on Jefferson or Gravelway, this is a perfect example of why we failed ourselves in our community by not keeping active and not staying around and that we are probably the number one stakeholder of the things going on in Gravelway and we have no voice at this forum and we should be ashamed of ourselves and we really need to get organized. Anybody after the meeting, I'm, I definitely want to start a conversation about trying to restart it. Please reach out. Um, I guess, has anybody been out in rush hour? I'm going to close off traffic on the alleys. How do I get to my garage? Okay, there are two schools that are going to be at, in, in this neighborhood, immediate neighborhood, that are going to be affected Roosevelt High School and St. Francis Cabrini. Have you considered the impact on school bus routes? Have you considered the, uh, the routes that pedestrians will take on their way home? Have you considered school crossings? Now we are right across the street from uh, Cuda's funeral home. Have you considered the impact on funeral cortages? Have you considered what happens when, uh, when there's a big funeral of a policeman or a fireman or a, an alderman? 
for our schools, for our property owners, for our residents, for our business owners on either side of Gravoy. These are neighborhoods. This is not a traffic pattern. This is a neighborhood. Thank you. Virginia, she, she had a lot of questions in there, but uh, just kind of the overarching question from MoDOT. Yes. Did you do a traffic impact study uh, to be able to tell you know, how it's going to impact some of the other side streets and that kind of stuff? They're talking to you. <laughs> yeah, MoDOT still here? Over there. She's coming up. So we're all clear we're having these meetings so that we can hear from you none of the streets will be closed unless there's an all an ordinance from your alderman okay that's what these are going to have these comments so the, the the lady who had the comment about the alley those are the kind of comments that we need so that we can actually sit down and figure out what those issues are and how do we work around them that's, those are my comments. Again, we're back and if anybody wants to have a conversation back at the easel so that we can have a discussion. Could you Thank stay? You. Well, we are having a This is not a discussion. And, and then we, hold, 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 hold on. Hold, this is hold, not a discussion. Hold, hold, hold on for This is hold. what we call grandstanding. This so is, we would love to have the discussion with you. Oh. Oh. That's what this oh. is oh. for. Oh. 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 Can everybody hold on for a second? You think, hold on one second before, something I wasn't going to say publicly that I'm going to say publicly right now, because I am outraged about what I just saw. When this thing came before East-West Gateway, they said that they were gonna change the timing on stoplights up and down Gravoy. And then we find out a couple weeks ago that they're closed, they're planning to close 10, 15 streets and you can't even get an answer to your question. That is ridiculous. I'm sorry. We, we, we are gonna have to have better than that. And there's the people that live within these communities that we need to hear from. It's absolutely critical that when major plans are being made like this, that there are open and honest discussions so that people have an opportunity to tell you how it's gonna impact their lives every day. So we're gonna continue, and again, I'm asking MoDOT to keep an open mind, uh, to keep an open plan, because at the end of the day, the people within this room are the people that their businesses are gonna be impacted, their homes, everything in their lives are gonna be impacted by this. So adjust your plan if you have to adjust your plan to meet their needs. So let's continue. Hello, my name is Damien Johnson. I'm with examiner.com and I'm just wondering though, could you explain how this project became a priority, the steps it took 
bit over, let's say, bridges that's crumbling across Missouri and any other things. Why is this one a priority? Certainly. The funding that we received for this project is a federal money that's for congestion mitigation and air quality, mm -hmm. which allows us to work on the signals on along this corridor. Okay. So these signals, um, basically we put them in a grant, um, they are past their lifespan, the signals themselves, and it is at this point that we need to replace the signals and the hardware, the controller box that controls them, so that they stay current and we can continue to coordinate the signals along this route. So this is that type of funding. So this money can only be spent on these signals. Okay, then why do you... Why not just replace the signals as opposed to do the whole project? Well, we certainly have that option. Um, last summer when we uh, were in a conferences, two conferences, uh, one concerning uh, pedestrian safety because St. Louis um, City is has the second highest amount of pedestrian fatalities in okay. the state. Um, and the other one was a high crash location and it kind of gave us tactics on what we can do to decrease the amount of um, roadway crashes, bicycle crashes, and pedestrian fatalities in the area. So we had this project on the books, uh, several of fire, EMS, police, uh, city, MoDOT, all attended these conferences, and we said we should take a look at these projects and see if there's anything that we can do knowing these new tactics that we can come back and apply to this project. And this was one of those, those tactics to do. So we took it and we were looking at asking the public comments about is this something that you would like? If it's not something you'd like, then we'll go back and put in the signals exactly the way they are today. Okay, and uh, now you have other projects like on, on MoDOT, there's a list of other projects you're proposing that's not on this, but they can go to MoDOT and view other projects. So is it possible that uh, you could only replace the signals as opposed to do the whole street? I heard so. I heard you said, I uh, know on MODOC said this project is set to happen whether we have input or not. So just explain that timeline. Like, let's say people don't want the project. Do you have to go forward with the project or? Well, we will go forward with the, the project as far as replacing the signals. Replacing whether signal. this, the, the signals get replaced exactly how they are today, okay. we will do that. If we have the opportunity to make some improvements, then we can do that. Um, but if we, if there is no agreement and the alderman cannot, uh, do not pass an ordinance to close the street, then we will continue on replacing the signals exactly the way they are today. Okay. Um, and do you plan on going to neighborhood meetings and like Gravel Park or would you plan on going to neighborhood meetings, Gravel Park or? I know. Gravel's Park. I've been to two neighborhood meetings thus far when talking with the older men and women in the area. They, we let them determine how they want to have those neighborhood conversations. Some have invited us to speak at their neighborhood meetings. Some have wanted to, to, to take it on themselves, meet in smaller groups with their neighborhoods. So we really leave it to the aldermen and the women in the neighborhoods to have those, uh, tell us how they want to do it. Now, some of these streets, like, you, we talked about bike trails, like, some of the bike trails you kind of like went back on, I know it's on Chippewa and Merrimack, mm -hmm. um, explain that one, why did, first it was a two-way, both ways, now it's then one way with a bike. We have a bike lane, lane in one direction and shared in the other. Yeah, so, uh, what, do, what do you see the future of that street and uh, how come it changed like three times? Uh, so it changed twice. Twice. So what we do, and you know, this is not an exact science. So this is this is one of those. Where, you know, we're listening to the public once again. Yes. So we heard a lot of comments back that, hey, congestion is just too much. We can't. We don't like it. We want to try to find a different solution. So we looked at what we can do. Can we get the other lane back in there and still provide some type of bicycle access? With, within the space that we have. You know, that we're bound there on the viaduct by the mm -hmm. railroad tracks on both sides. But we also had a serious pedestrian issue on top where the, the railroad tracks um, installed a fence and blocked off the pedestrian movement.
walking for a mile on each side of the track. Right. So we wanted to make sure that we did provide some pedestrian access down in the viaduct to allow pedestrians to cross. So the best solution at this, at this time was to still provide a bike lane in the eastbound direction, but then do a shared bike lane in the westbound direction. And what is the insistence of so many bike lanes as opposed to like on that street, this right here, a shared lane? Um, the, you have to really talk with Great Rivers Greenway. They're they're in charge of that, the Gateway Bike Plan for the St. Louis, St. Louis County. Um, we just we as a partner adhere to the bike plan and and provide those opportunities whenever we have a resurfacing job that we can come through and add those bike lanes in. Okay. Now, in terms of more means like, I mean, would you are you done with the meeting there or? No, I was invited out here to do an interview, so I'll be heading back in there as soon as we're done. Okay, well, that's all. Okay.